Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Pearls of Wisdom. Another very, very special guest today. Uh, one of our Deadly Choices ambassador and now Olympian, Brandon Wakeling uh, is, is going to be on the show today. So looking forward to that um, interview. So, But before we do get started, just like to acknowledge the traditional owners and the land in which we gather and pay our respect to elders past, present and emerging. So thank you for viewing in. And as I said, very special guest. Uh, we have Brandon Wakeling. Uh, we'll bring Brandon up now. Mate, congratulations. You got through your first Olympics. Yeah, it's got a ring to it, doesn't it? Olympia, something that I've wanted since I was a kid, so to tick that one off the bucket list is huge. Yeah, mate, it is special. As you say, you are now uh, officially an Olympian. Uh, I did see you uh, uh, at the opening ceremony. You, you got your noggin on, on, the, on the camera, so that was good. <laughs> that was um yeah purposeful we we asked at the back what side of the cameras would be on so me and um erica the one of the other weightlifters just snuck on that side to make sure we were you know front and center once we did our walk yeah so mate just give us a bit of a background or you know what was the experience like mate just 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 to explain to people this is your first but um just you know and it, it was a bit different to other times but still must have been exciting yeah, as you said, yeah, it was my first, but it definitely was a different games to what, you know, everyone's used to. Um, COVID restrictions were obviously in place. Our whole team had their COVID vaccination prior to going. Um, and once we were there, obviously everyone was there wearing their masks. You know, the food halls were all sectioned off with everyone's seats with little, you know, plastic surroundings to everyone. Um, you know, had some space and was trying to minimise the impact that COVID could have in the village. Um, but other than that, you know, we were free to walk around the village. Training wasn't interrupted in, in any way. Um, yes, yeah, so other than those protocols, it just felt like, you know, any other massive multi-sport event. So, mate, within your team, which I, I think you all, you had to stay with, what what the numbers within the, the weightlifting team? Yeah, so we had five in, in our weightlifting team. So we had two males, myself, and then one of our 109 uh, kilogram lifters, and then we had three females. So last time we had five was back in year 2000 in the Sydney Olympics. So it's our biggest weightlifting team to date. Um, didn't get to beat the record, but but to match it with five is pretty good. Since the year 2000, we, we've only ever had, you know, one man, one female represent Australia after that date up until now. So to have five... Um, I think it will have, you know, a good impact on the sport. Yeah, I was going to say that shows, uh, you know, the strength of, of weightlifting within Australia and, and it is getting better. So that's great. Mate, uh, you got 13th, is that right? you 13th, um, which you've got to be very, very proud of. And um, how did you go competing, especially with no crowds? Um, I didn't mind it. It was obviously a massive venue that, you know, had multi-story tiered seating. So I don't know how many thousand that would have been in, in the arena, but it would have been a packed house. Um, and when we lift on the stage, uh, for those that don't really know weightlifting, we all warm, out, warm up out the back and it's all sectioned off so you can't really see where we're warming up. And then when it's an athlete's turn to lift, you go out on the stage yes. um, on your own and just face all the crowd. So there's no one else obstructing your view. But from what we see, all the crowds are blacked out, so I can't really see what's going on anyway with who's watching. Um, I could hear our two Aussie weightlifters in the crowd cheering me on, so that that was good. Um, so anyone involved in weightlifting was allowed to watch, but obviously there was no, you know, home spectators, international spectators, or people from any other sports. But once it came to my lifts, I wasn't really thinking about the crowd at all, so it didn't impact me at all. Yeah, I think you look at the sport. And I think you can see that. Um, I'll, I'm a fan of weightlifting um, in, in the Olympics, and I watched it for a number of years. But um, yeah, you, by the time you guys do get out there, as you say, you warm up at the back, you get to the stage. I mean, all you're focused on is that bar sitting in front of you. And um, I think, you, I think as a sports person, you can you get that. Yeah, I could definitely feel the magnitude of the event, even though that there weren't people in the stands. I knew that there were a lot of people watching, um, you know, from back home because my phone was buzzing, you know, for the couple hours before the event. Had to had, had to put it away when it come time to focus. Um, 
but it was good. I got all six of my lifts, which is something that, you know, I haven't done in five years. So to do that on my Olympic debut was definitely, um, it was definitely a massive bonus for me. That's great, mate. Hey, mate, um, there's a lot of things going on. Obviously, uh, we're back in lockdown here, um, back here in Brisbane and Queen, uh, you know, for southeast Queensland. So, mate, you guys had to obviously uh, be Olympians going over to Japan, uh, have your back vaccinations. And, you know, uh, we're going through that here in Australia now. So it is very, very important that people look at getting vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, well, from what I understand, the whole team is, is vaccinated, uh, vaccinated. So I got my um, AstraZeneca vaccine, you know, from early on in the year, waited my 12 weeks, got my second one. Um, yeah, and then off I went. And all, all the other weightlifters I know got vaccinated, all the other Australian team members I know got vaccinated. Um, I'm sure a lot of the other countries would have had the same protocols put in place. So just to ensure our safety and obviously the safety of the Australian population when we come back home, it was in our best interest um, to, you know, get get the vaccine for the sake of our people back home. Yeah, and that's great, mate. And obviously you guys are, are in lock now. Now, where, where are you situated? I'm in Sydney. So I'm doing my 14 days here before coming back home. Um, the Meriton Suites, I think it's called. Yep. Um, I got no idea. It was about 15 minutes from the airport. I was kind of out of it during the drive from the <laughs> from the airport to the yeah ho hotel we did like a overnight flight so yeah it's not too far from the airport from what i understand did you you pay for a luxury suite <laughs> well i didn't pay so i'm not <laughs> complaining <laughs> so that's a no <laughs> <laughs> yeah no not me uh, okay mate brandon thank you so much and once again congratulations uh, we're all proud of you here and uh, that that a group watching here uh, at you know, our headquarters here for IUE. So, mate, we're all proud of you and, and well done. Thank you. Looking forward to coming home.